Well, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Los Monsteros. It's so great to have you guys back here. As always, my name is Leaf, and you know what? I really wanted to build for Gariels. I don't think I built for these guys in the longest time, uh, and I think they're pretty cool crocodilian species, so I really wanted to build for them. And I thought they would fit in perfectly right next to the Gower. In case if you guys don't remember, we kind of did name the Gower exhibit after Monsoon, because he did such a beautiful job on not only the Gower, but also the Eld's Deer and the Green Peafowl, which we are using within the zoo. And I did want to dedicate a little bit of an area to him for the wonderful work that he did put into them. So, one of the things I really want to have was an underwater viewing, and this is very emblematic of, I think it's Chester Zoos, found over in, I want to say, England? Yeah, England. So, that's essentially what I want to have over here, and I want to have another area up here for guest viewing up like, you know, on top, so you could actually see the Gariel swimming from above. Also, using the Gariel statue and make a little bit of a statue of one. Uh, obviously, not as intense as the normal Gariel statue looks. I want to have a much more cuter one, and we're just using the decals to make it feel like it has a little bit more, I don't know, kind of roughens. So, what I'm also doing over here is essentially working on a little bit of a bronze memorial plaque because this would be an art installation and you would have a little bit of information pertaining to these guys right down below. So I do kind of use those hinge pieces as a way to make that look pretty good right there. And I'm just playing with the orientation of him, making sure that he looks good in the sun and that's about it. What I'm also having trouble with over here is trying to figure out how to get this exhibit to look good. Now, in case if you don't know, Gargoyles don't really need as much space as I really put down right there. So half of this your little first part of the speed build is me trying to figure out the perfect space in order to get these Gargoyles in here nice and finely. Uh, and I kind of settle on this beautiful look from like a uh, waterfall. I think it turns out pretty good in the end. It makes itself as a nice centerpiece, uh, contrasting against like the little fishing kind of village hut that we have going on with these guys that would act as the backstage holding for them. What I'm also doing over here is doing a little bit of plaster lining for the pool itself. Again, you guys probably know this by now, I love to have this realism in my zoos. It's probably one of the, like, it's so fun just to do realistic things in Planet Zoo. And I'm having a lot of fun doing that over here, especially with doing underwater exhibits. Because one of the things you will notice, it's not really like, you know, fully terraformed and stuff. Instead, it's very industrial. It's very like, um, how do you explain it? It's very, uh, piece by piece. <laughs> um, so having like these nice angular areas really helps to uh, really sell that realism vibe. But what we also do alongside that is just making sure the staff can actually access the lower parts because this would be like kind of drained out when staff do need to clean the water. Let's just say it's getting a little bit too grimy in there. It's the perfect way for staff to really get digging in there. Also got to give a huge shout out to Kai for the free build mod. It's coming in so clutch with this build because it does help frame a beautiful fishing village right behind there. Uh, that's essentially the clay tile roof turned upside down. It has this beautiful texture that I really wanted to use over there. So that's what we use over there. And essentially, we're just lining the rest of that with some faux rocks. Most of this is going to be doing some faux rock work for the majority of this. And we're also using those beautiful faux rock kind of clusters that we made back in the Dole exhibit just to help it kind of feel a lot more organic. Feel like you're going through the same old motions while still... Uh, no, not really that, but more so having some, like, you know, some ideas that we presented before still emblematic within the actual thing. It's, like, very much telling a movie or watching a TV show. You always want to have, like, those mentions cut constantly popping up what we're also doing over here is working on our underwater viewing it's something that i'm very proud of because it was so fun to put together so essentially what we do we kind of make it as a little bit of a cave if that makes sense so we do use a lot of faux rocks in order to give off this beautiful cave kind of look i really want to mix it up and make sure it felt like very organic so no viewing area really does look the same as the next one. I always want to have this feel so dynamic and have it feel like it's always constantly changing through the next porthole that you actually do look through. And I think that makes this exhibit 
take off to a next level. It really does look really good in the end, and I really do hope you guys stick by for that. In case if you don't, you can always skip to the end of the video. I don't hate you more the less for that. Why did I say that? Listen, I love you guys. You guys know how much I love you. Moving on through here, though, adding a lot more faux rocks and faux trees and all the foes, every single foe in here, just to make sure it looks very nice in the end. I love how well this turned out. Um, it was very much a struggle trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And in fact, I was like halfway through this and I was like, I'm not really feeling all that inspired to do the India area. But um, no, it was only a couple minutes later that I was like, oh, maybe I could do this. And then what if I do this and add this? Um, I remember I was talking with Forge while I was doing this too, and he's like, you know what, you don't need to work on India, you could always move to something else, but at some point I was like, no, I, I really want to build this area, and you could really tell that like the inspiration struck around this time, because you just see me start to do some very whack stuff when it comes to all this, like over here with this little bit of a, uh, I don't know what you would call this, a little bit of a planter bed. I really had so much fun doing this one over here. It just felt so natural. It kind of looked like a, um, I don't know, kind of like plastery kind of looking clay with some wood beams in between that. And I really love the effect that that gave. So I have that going on right over there. And I also wanted to have this feel very lush because keep in mind, this is part of our Greater India exhibit. It does have a lot of lush um, themes going on. So I did want to include as much tropical, dense kind of foliage as possible. And I think it comes off pretty well in the end when all things are said and done. We also include some elephant ears. We include the bird's nest. I really love these plant names. They feel so, like, nice for a zoo game, I gotta say. And we also get to work on our little, what do you call this, waterfall area. It's very steep. I really do like that because while you may not know this, gharials can climb pretty well. Uh, pretty much all reptiles can climb pretty well. They're kind of sneaky little fellas. So what I really wanted to make sure was that they could not escape. So we have a very big steep waterfall happening over here. And I do use the waterfall jets. And I do kind of clean it up with the other effects later down the line to make this look pretty good in the end. Very happy with how well this entire waterfall came out. And I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. And maybe try something like that on your own because that was really fun to put together. Moving on through the rest of here though, what good would a swamp be without some mangroves? We add some of that, and we also add some of the golden bamboo from the foliage pack as well. Very useful pieces over there, and they turned out looking so good in the end. I don't know, I just love it. What we also do, we kind of add some more faux rocks over there, just as a way to kind of make it feel a little bit more integrated. And we also add some on the walls over here. This is very much a technique that I very much am stealing from Mr. Wyatt. Uh, he does this in Orwell Zoo, and I'm like, you know what, Wyatt, listen, you smart buddy. I gotta take some pointers from you. <laughs> so we do kind of that stuff over there and we do make sure to kind of have this be a little bit of climb proof as well, making sure that our gharials aren't really able to climb out. So we kind of overarch this little area a little bit and it does help to make it feel a lot more, um, a lot more safe, a lot more structured, if that makes sense. Because while those windows were great, it needed something on the top just to make it feel like it was a little bit more um, solidified, if that makes sense. And we also add a little bit of that like faux rock to the other side as well. And we also add another layer up here for the trees and foliage to kind of peek out from the top of the waterfall. I really do love that kind of jazz. It just looks fantastic in the end. Uh, and one of the other things I really want to do as well was add some more twinges of yellow in there. So we do use some bamboo and here I am just going through the entire thing trying to find some inspiration. And I'm like, you know what? We got to make these windows kind of dirty. So that's exactly what we do over here with the decals. Maybe these have been there for a little bit, especially with the water kind of like seeping through and a little bit of that stuff. Uh, this wouldn't really be the cleanest of habitats, especially for gharials kind of difficult to clean these guys every single day so i really just want to integrate some uh you know some grime some dirt some uh, muck i believe the bronation term would be jank we need to get as much jank in there as possible um so we do kind of that stuff over there and one of the things i really want to focus on over here was the empty area 
Uh, now, normally, some people would be like, oh, there's a perfectly empty area. We're going to put some animals in there. It could be a small animal. But over here, I just wanted to let the guests breathe a little bit. I wanted this beautiful large area in between the elephants and the gharials as a way to kind of guide your way to looking over there and really appreciating the foliage. So that's exactly what we do over here. I'm just going over with a nice layer of periwinkles to give a little bit of this kind of sparsely decorated foliage. Uh, and we also go through with some beautiful cactuses, cacti, sorry, and succulents to really make it feel like it pops a lot more. Make it feel like it's a completely different biome than what you're kind of walking through. Uh, not really sure why I did that, but it just felt so nice to do. And it was just such a nice way to, well, take an empty area and make it feel a lot more beautiful. So we essentially go through here with all the palms, of course, since this is kind of based off of like the San Diego kind of Southern California area. I did want to integrate as many palms as possible. So we do use like the California palms and we also use the dual palms to the best of our advantage. We include some nettle as well. It's becoming quickly one of my favorite pieces. And I think hopefully soon you'll see Leaf put down some well, cacti. There we go. And those are really such centerpiece items over there. I don't know if I put the beaver tails in there or not, but they probably would have been pretty nice. So just moving through the rest of here, making sure that all the curb is all set. I did cut out a significant part of footage for like all the curb work that I do. I just want to include a little bit of it just to show you guys my process. Uh, when you do do these like high budget zoos, I can always suggest that you guys do custom curbs. It's one of my favorite things that Bro Nation has ever taught me. And it makes it habitat and makes the areas around the habitats just feel so much more alive. It makes it feel so much more vindicated. And I just really do love it for that regard. It just feels so much better in the end. And it's just one of the greatest tips that I've ever received. And it's something that I'm giving to all of you guys right now. I highly suggest you guys try that out. Unfortunately, since I did cut out most of that curb footage, in fact, I wasn't even recording at the time. Uh, I can't even say I cut it out. We do lose some footage of some things that I do. I do some very minor path work, very minor, like tiny decorations, but here's where a majority of it all comes into play. I really want to have this feel like it's a nice little fishing village on the coast of like, you know, like a little bit of an Indian river or something like that. Like maybe the Ganges or something. That's where Gariels are found. So I did want to incorporate some boats, some crates. Maybe this was like an old fishing town or something like that. I just really want to have it be kind of subtle and have it kind of decorate the top of the exhibit right there to make it feel like this is in complete completely immersive experience which i feel like a lot of the times you do find that with like these high budget zoos be it omaha be it like you know tampa san diego animal kingdom all very big zoos that really do take this to a new degree and i really want to incorporate a lot of that i was trying to play around with the paths right there but it really wasn't jiving with me kind of settled against that but maybe i'll go back and do some custom paths also using the fever trees as always because they're probably one of the most useful trees in the game right now and also doing some work around the pathways as well uh, unfortunately, this is kind of like a wheelchair killer over here. I did try and make this as ADA compliant as possible, but unfortunately, if you are in a wheelchair, you better hope it's electric because this is kind of going to be a little bit of grueling over here, but it's the only main terrain change that we have over there. So hopefully I hope all you guys out there can forgive me for that. But what I'm also doing over here, again, you guys know how much I love my implied realism. I'm also doing some filters and some, you know, um, vents over here for the water filtration. So I do include the vents. I do include this little bit of a sunken in piece because when you do have a large habitat like this, all the water automatically goes down to the lowest point. So I have that going down right there into a secondary pit. I think that looks pretty good right there. And in addition to that, I also have some leaves, some moss, and some just general grime happening throughout the entire habitat. 
Um, it's just a good way to make it feel li like a lot more lived in, if that makes sense. So this is something I actually did in my alligator habitat in Sugar Pine Zoo. By the way, Sugar Pine Zoo, go check that out. I think someone out there may be covering that zoo very shortly. So do keep your eyes peeled on the Planet Zoo community. I'm very happy for that one to work out. Um, but yeah, that's essentially that. Um, working over here with the rest of the decals, making sure that they have the right color and whatnot, and just generally placing them down where, like, you know, grime and moss and, like, algae would probably congregate, especially in, like, corners and stuff. Uh, so we have that happening right there, and I do use the moss pieces as well. I think they have a very unique texture that I feel like helps to add to them a lot more. So we have all that jazz going on through here, and because of the free build mod, I'm able to do so much more fun stuff. So I do kind of have these hanging leaves. I do have like hanging wind chimes every so often. Um, and I even have some of those hanging sacks, like those predator prey sacks or whatever. I have some of that jazz happening right there. I'm very happy with how well this all turned out. And our gharials were stuck in there, so I kind of moved them out right there. Working in the rest of here though, I really want to have this elevated viewing platform be secured so I give them a little bit of, um, how you call it, uh, columns to help it feel a lot more supported. And speaking of supported, I also wanted to have this little bit of a viewing canopy as well. Because this would be a relatively hot zoo, I did want to make sure that guests are covered at, you know, for the majority of the zoo, um, obviously you would probably want some nice sunny areas for your guests, but you also probably want some nice covered areas for them as well. And I really settled on this jetty bedding for that. Uh, it's easily one of my favorite pieces in the game. It's so beautiful. It looks so nice, and it's probably one of my favorite pieces from the aquatic pack, that entire set. I wish we got smaller pieces out of that because that wood is so useful. But essentially just going through here, adding the rest of the pieces to that, and just having a lot of fun with it, just, you know, painting it as I go. Adding some ivy to it as well, just to have it feel a little bit more dense, a little bit more, um, foliaged. Foliage, that's a new term. I'm gonna coin that now. Um, and just generally decorating the rest of the habitat. We've finally reached like, you know, the cleanup part of the habitat in this build. So I hope you guys enjoy all this jazz. I kind of copied the roof from the adult exhibit because this wouldn't really be like, you know, you're not really designing for the sky in mind. Um, you're really designing for the guest perspective. And I figured if you do have a roof kind of like this, by the way, shout out to Zoo for this beautiful little blueprint. It helps so much. Um, but if you are building for guests on the ground level, this is probably the kind of jazz that you would have happening around there. Just a nice, no-nonsense, corrugated iron roof. I think that turned out pretty damn good in the end. But you know what turned out good? This entire habitat! Look at this! Look at the barrels! Look at everything! I'm very happy with how well this turned out, and I'm very happy that you guys are still enjoying Los Monsteros. It's easily one of my favorite projects nowadays, so definitely do check out the rest of the series in case if you guys haven't already yet. I do want to thank you guys one last time for stopping by at Humble Lolo Leafs channel. Hope you guys are enjoying the rest of the stuff that's happening within the Planet Zoo community right now, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.